Hello, my awesome and amazing Scorpios. It's Mel with Blue Scorpion Tarot here to bring you another general collective reading. Love messages from your specific person. If you've been in no contact or separated, split up, broken up, what do they want to say to you? We're going to find out. Calling upon the trusted ancestors of my Scorpio viewers and subscribers to bring in the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth through the power of the numbers. And so it is. And of course, rolling the dice to see what I need to shuffle a deck to. Power of number seven. Power of number five. Power of number two. Okay. Looks like we're going to the number 14. 14 in tarot is temperance, by the way. And even though I'm starting off with a Romance Angels deck, temperance is a card of reconciliation, ebb and flow. It can talk about manifestation, to have faith and trust in your love life. Okay. Like you're on the right path, even if you're going through separation, heartbreak, split up, divorce, whatever the case may be. Some of you guys are dealing with a Sagittarius. You could also be dealing with a Cancer or a Leo born in the month of July. You could also be dealing with a Taurus or a Gemini born in the month of May. You could be dealing with an Aquarius or a Pisces born in the month of February. You could also be dealing with a Capricorn or an Aquarius born in the month of January. You could also be dealing with an Aries or a Taurus born in the month of April. Picking up on strong Pisces energy again through the number 12. However, you could be dealing with a Sagittarius or a Capricorn born in the month of December. More strong Capricorn energy through the number 15. And again, Aquarius energy coming back in through the number 17. Some of you guys could be 21, 24, 25, or 27 years of age. You could also be 41, 42, 45, or possibly 47 years old. You could also be 51, 52, 54, or possibly 57 years of age for my more mature audience. You could have been born in 1951, 1952, 1954, or 1957, again, for my more mature audience. You could have also been born in 1971, 1972, 1974, or possibly 1975. Again, that's just through the power of the numbers for the moment. But either way, going to the power of number 14 for the beautiful star sign of Scorpio. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Trusted the ancestors of my Scorpio viewers and subscribers. What does this person that Scorpio has been dealing with? What do they want to say to Scorpio? Or where is the situation going? What's going on? Deception. They know that they were deceptive with you. Someone is wearing a false mask in this relationship. Okay, so a lot of times when I see this card, I hear the song from Cindy Lauper, True Colors. I see your true colors shining through. Well, they knew exactly what they were doing. They suppressed a lot of their emotions. Some of them were players. They were in and out of your life. So they knew that they weren't being totally authentic, transparent, or honest with you about how they felt about the connection or where the connection was going. Honeymoon, this person could have gotten married to someone else or 
You could have also been engaged to this person at one point in time. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. Now, on the other hand, yes, we are in a Mercury retrograde right now. We don't really have any major significant holiday that's coming up during the month of April. However, it could very well be true that this person may reach out during a holiday event throughout the course of the year. They could also be thinking about what would have been like to continue to move forward with this relationship. And what I feel here is they're deep within their psyche thinking like, well, what if I married Scorpio? What if I would have put more effort forward? What if I would have been more authentic, truthful, honest, what I'm feeling here is that because of the suppression, they, they just couldn't handle being vulnerable. They weren't willing to fully open up that heart chakra. So there's a lot of what ifs that I'm getting from this honeymoon card and their form of deception, however they choose, however they chose, excuse me, however they chose to lie to you feel like they're in regret, but I'm seeing the judgment card in my mind's eye right now. I feel like they got a lot of judgment on their backside at this moment in time. Trust. They know if they come back, they're going to have to earn your trust back. It says the situation is calling for you to have faith. I do feel that this person will make a return, but their plan of action, it's going to have to be solid. It has to be believable. And they know that they're going to have to work 10 times harder to get that trust back with you. Bottom of the deck, forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. I think with our human conditioning and the way that we think sometimes, you guys, it's like when that person has done us wrong, it's so easy for some odd reason. Those painful moments or the split, the breakup, the divorce, the rejection, the ghosting, it seems to me that for whatever reason, we have a tendency to think more of the negative and how they did us wrong versus all of the good times that we could have shared with that person. Because what I'm feeling here is that the pain, the pain of the split or the breakup seemed to be more grueling than the feel good feelings, that oxytocin that goes through our body when we're in love with someone you know, we get addicted to their energy because we're getting validated. You know, we're getting validated in that relationship. But when somebody hurts us, it sends a signal and into our brain. And it's like we go through, yes, we'll go through the trigger moments. But our brains are also wired for survival mode. So when we're going through pain and heartbreak, we're trying to instantaneously try to figure out how to fix things, how to fix a relationship, you know, because we don't, we're grieving the loss of, well, maybe I should have done this. I could have done better with that. So then we're the ones that keep getting all of those questions in our mind. But in truth, the pressure is actually more on that person. Because, it, you know, with them walking away from you or whatever they did and maybe you had no choice but to walk away from them, you could have stuck with it, but would have been worth it to stick around and still keep going through the rejection, the abandonment, um, any kind of narcissistic behaviors, tendencies, whatever the case may be. The pressure is more on this person to build up your trust. Because in truth, they, they put you back at ground zero. So it's kind of like, to me, it's like a phantom zone. 
okay? It's like a phantom zone, friendship, quote unquote, friendship zone. And in truth, it is very difficult to try to be friends with an ex. Some people can, but there's always going to be the events that had taken place between you and that person. You know, it's kind of difficult. And I do feel that this person still has attraction for you, but they suppress it. Because it was just easier for them to walk away, go find somebody that they didn't have to work for the relationship. See, a lot of you guys are tough cookies and have been through other tumultuous relationships. But the bottom line, the pressure's on them. I see judgment on them. You came closer than anyone. So even with them going off to a third party, because there's always some kind of a third party situation, okay? Third party situations don't have to mean another person. It could be their friends, their family members, their job situation, but a good part of the time, there's always somebody else, okay? You came closer. So this, this automatically tells me whoever they went off to, nah. They didn't get, they didn't get what they were looking for. You're coming closer, Scorpio. You're the shining star because I'm seeing the star card in my mind's eye about that statement. I wish I could share my good news with you. This could be an upcoming event. There's a honeymoon card and them thinking possibly the what if, what if I would have married Scorpio? What if I just come forward and tell them that I want to be with them? Or for some cases, they could have recently left the karmic or they're gearing up to leave the karmic in order to come towards you. We still have yet to go into tarot, but they have some kind of good news that they want to share with you. But I do feel that this person is heavily afraid of rejection you could have given this person something and they never responded to you. Maybe it was a birthday card. Maybe it was a holiday card. Or um, you got a gift and gave it to them because you were thinking of them and thought that, okay, well, maybe that would open up the gateway, the portal for them to come forward, the doorway of communication. But some of them did not, they didn't reach out, they didn't acknowledge you or maybe acknowledge a gift, okay? But there is something here about good news. The timing just wasn't right for us. I'm not always in agreement with that statement. If you do try to reach out to them, Scorpio, they're not gonna respond. Because they're not ready. They're not ready to face the truth. They're not ready for some of them to build up that trust because they have a lot of guilt. They have guilt that's weighing down upon them. So the timing just wasn't right, I feel, is honestly an excuse because there were distractions. You cannot blame timing on distractions. Distractions are distractions. So this, to me, is a lame excuse. Everything is always in perfect timing and divine order. And timing, timing is, you know, a matter of perception as well. Because the timing reality would be considered like fourth dimension. Between the third, third dimension and 5D dimension, that we experience as a human being, what we see with our physical eyes, what we are trying to shift time frames within our subconscious mind, that 4D dimension, and then our higher self. Their higher self was clouded. 
because they had everything right then, right there. And, you know, I'm hearing uh, the song from Richard Marks in my head, right here waiting for you. Some of you could, uh, when I'm hearing the words from that song, um, oceans apart, day after day, and I slowly go insane, something like that. There, some of you guys could be in a long distance situation with this person, or you know, maybe you live in the same state but different cities. If you're in the United States, they could live in a different state, whatever the case may be. But I'm hearing for some of you guys, long distance situation. Part of it could be they might not have gone through an entire healing phase. Some of them are dealing with PTSD. They could be dealing with um, mental health issues, etc. You know, some of them could be in the military or were formerly uh, uh, part of the military for like the United States or wherever, serving their respective country. Some of them were not healed. But part of me feels that, yeah, the timing just wasn't right for us. It's an excuse. Because they had it all. They were, they were the ones that were feeling insecure. Because you were the gift. It's like I'm seeing the gift card. The imagery of the gift card from the Kipper deck. It's like spirit presented you to this person and say, okay, we're going to give you Scorpio. Handle Scorpio with kid gloves. You're like a precious metal, Scorpio. Okay, so... Yeah, they're going to be coming forward, but they are fearful of rejection because they know that every single time that they could have tried to attempt to reach out that something was unsatisfying on your part. So setbacks or disappointments. Some of them could be reaching out in the next four minutes, four hours, four days, four months. King of Wands coming in. Something about them taking action. You could be dealing with a fire sign, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. You could also be dealing with a water sign, Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. The Chariot. Again, some of them could be at a distance, but the Chariot also represents victory and success. You could also be dealing with a Cancer or a Leo born in the month of July. Wanting to come forward here to bring you in the Ace of Cups. So this is all about reconciliation. They want to reconcile with you. The Fool card, wanting to take a leap of faith. Sign of Aries coming in through the Fool card. Some of them might even reach out today or whenever you see this video. You never know. Keep an open mind. Open up that heart chakra in order to receive. Some of them may even tell you that they were a fool. They were a fool for letting you go. Yeah, they've been so in conflict or wherever they're at right now, they've got some kind of conflict going on around them. Five of Swords. A lot of it is mental conflict. Because they know that the, press, the pressure's on. The pressure's on to build back up that trust. Because they may be obsessing over the fact of, of perfectionism and making sure that they dot their I's, cross their T's, you know, when they decide to come forward and make you that offer. Yeah, 
They're lo either lost in their thoughts or they're waiting for the ships to come in. Again, they could be at a distance from you. Three of Wands. Some of you guys are dealing with air signs, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. They want something to work out. It's just a matter of them figuring out how they're going to do it. What is this good news? The good news may be that they're not in flux or suspension anymore or they're getting out of a stuck position. Could be dealing straight up with the Pisces. Yeah, that they're gearing up to walk away from something or someone, Eight of Cups. But they know now, like when they come in through quote unquote, metaphorically, four cups, they, their verbiage has got to be like this. I don't feel Scorpio when they come back that they're going to try to pressure you. Here we go. We got temperance power number 14 on the bottom of the deck. Your numbers were seven, five, two for this reading today. You can look up the angel number seven, five, two through Google. But power number 14, temperance, reconciliation, and ebb and flow. I don't feel like they're going to try to pressure you. I feel like they're going to come in a little bit timid, possibly meek, and then have a little bit of boldness wrapped around it. Because they know that they're going to have to be very direct in their communication. So even if they stumble over their words, and if they're going to do it, if they do it during Mercury retrograde... Their thoughts may be racing and they can't spew the words out fast enough or to meet or match what is going on in their brain waves right now, okay? Like just stumbling over their words. But they may even directly say, I want you to trust me again. So they have, remember, they have more of a difficult task. They have more of the pressure. The pressure's on them to set the record straight, to do things right, to step up to the plate, but not coming in through any kind of force. It's just being more or less direct, and I feel like it's almost like a confession here to say, you know, I was wrong. I was in the wrong. I did deceive you, and that wasn't right. I had a hard time dealing with dot, 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 X, Y, Z reasons, etc. So my awesome and amazing Scorpios, if you would like to book a personal reading with me and do it through the power of the numbers, you can hit me up at bluescorpiongifts at gmail.com and my amazing assistant, Victoria, will book you for that personal reading. But until next time, take care.